Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today I'm going to be creating a piece which is inspired by Lisa Oxley, who goes by Scrap Witch Lisa. And it's one of the pieces that she did for um, the Life Book Summit that was held in 2019. And I have been a long, long time admirer of Lisa's artwork and she does these amazing hyperlapse videos and I have tried on numerous occasions to try and emulate or try and um, discover her secrets to her beautiful artwork because it's always so bright and full of white space. Um, and then I came across doing this and I just loved it so big shout out to Lisa because you're amazing, your artwork's amazing, and it was just so much fun to complete. So thank you so much for sharing your creativity and um, artwork with us all. And if you haven't followed her, please go and do that because you will be blown away by her artwork. But this piece was playing around with some of the techniques that she taught during the session. So one of the things she talked about was creating your own collage paper and drawing your own marks in it. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know I actually do this with stencils. I sort of make my own painted papers and stencil over the top and make my own things. I've never thought about sort of drawing on it myself and tearing that up and using making my own collage papers. So um, just something as simple as that made such a huge difference to this piece of work in the end because it was my artwork. It wasn't Dina Wakeley's artwork, which I love, as you well know, um, but it was something of mine. And um, I know when Lisa did hers, she did it onto copy paper. I really love using deli paper or a tissue paper because you get that transparency. Um, if you use the, the tissue paper, uh, copy paper, however, you would get more of a pop of white on your page. So that is something to consider. So as I was doing this, I decided I was going to play around with some different things and I thought I'd try using some ink on here as well. So all the other paid papers, sorry, pens I've used are permanent ink and that's really important because you are going to be gluing this down with matte gel medium so you want to make sure it's something that's not going to reactivate. So make sure anything you use in this is permanent. So I was experimenting with the ink because I wasn't 100% sure whether that would work or not. So I'm just using some cheap um, permanent markers from my... Um, News agents, this is the licensed quill pen from Jane Davenport. The first one I used was dead, so a good job I had a second one. This is another different pen she's got. Again, just scribble, scribble, scribble all over the top to get some different effects. Next, I'm going in with some more ink. Um, this didn't particularly work well, this page. I didn't actually end up using it. I just wanted to sort of drip it round and see what happened, but it was starting to get a little bit messy. The... Um, Deli paper that I've got has one glossier side and one matte side. Um, I think if you did this on regular tissue paper where it could actually soak into the fibres of the paper, it would work a lot better. But I was just, you know, being myself and spreading ink everywhere. And while it was fun to do, it didn't necessarily add anything to what I was doing. So you can see me here blotting it off. I did get the heat gun out to, to try and dry it up and clean up my area somewhat. Um, but these are the, the papers I ended up creating for the piece of artwork that we're doing. So I, a big shout out again to Lisa for this idea. It was lots of fun to do and I totally agree with her where she sort of says putting your own marks into your artwork is really important. And it's such a simple thing to do. And if, I, if you've got kids, get them to do it for you because they'd be having fun. My kids were unfortunately asleep so... <laughs> They, they weren't going to help me, but um, it's something I would get them to do in the future because they, they just don't think about it, they just do. So I'm working in my small um, Dilutions journal and I'm gessoing the page. Um, it wasn't a particularly clean page and it wasn't a particularly clean brush because I had ink on the back, but um, that's the way I roll. So one of the first things you need to do was to grab um, a magazine image of eyes and I got these eyes from... Um, some um, collage downloads I got from Mischief Circus. So they have sort of big eyes cut out because one of the things I've found in magazines in particular is you've got lots of sort of small eye shapes but you don't end up getting very big ones. So um, if you can get them from somewhere different you might be able to, to do something. 
Now all I'm doing is just using some of those collage papers that I've just made and tearing them up into small strips to glue down on my page. And just sort of gluing them and overlapping them. And this is one of the reasons I really like using the um, tissue paper is because it is translucent. So you can sort of overlap them and get an interesting effect over the top. Uh, the eyes that I had cut out there, um, when I do collage printables, I print them out onto sticker paper. So I find that a lot easier that I can just cut them out and stick them down rather than having to glue them. And I find they stick down a lot better as well. So that's one of my favourite tricks for printables. So this is one of the first things that uh, Lisa talks about doing is actually painting over the image and painting over your collage pieces. And I think this is where I had my sort of aha moment about how Lisa creates her white space. I really struggle with leaving white space on the page. So um, just sort of leaving that left hand page white would really bug me because I know that I would put paint on there or do something or drop it or you can see that it's not particularly white anyway because I painted over this page and it had the pink from below. But one of the things that she does is go back continually with her gesso or her white paint and actually paint it in over the top. So you can have harsh lines like I do have here with the white, uh, with the blue, but then she goes back and softens it by painting over the top. And I came to the conclusion as I was doing it, if I think about the white paint as just another colour in the palette, I am actually filling up the whole page with paint. It's, it's just some of that paint is white coloured. And I think when I worked that out for myself, it made it a lot easier. I, I stopped overthinking about white space and I just did it. And I just used it the way I usually use acrylic paints and it made it a whole heap easier for me. So I don't know if that helps anyone else who's sort of struggling with the same things that I do. Um, but it might do. So um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. But it worked for me, so it helped me out in the end. So I'm just going in with lots and lots of different colours. Um, I'm using the Dina Wakely colours in acrylic paints because I love those paints. I love the colours. And you can see I've sort of picked out a rainbow palette. No rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. But I am heat setting as I go along. Now I'm just going in with the white paint again. And you can see me softening off the colours. And that's what I'm sort of going to be continually doing as I go along. So in some of them I'm making the paints quite watery and translucent. In others I'm keeping the paint quite strong and bright using it straight out of the tube. Um, the little journal that you saw me pull out before, or this one, is my little 6x6 Dina Wakely journal. And I had a spare page in there and I thought I'm not going to waste the paint that I've got out. So I'm going to just paint it into the background. So that's another background for another day to do something exciting with. So you can see I'm adding out more paint again and blending it in and painting over some of the areas I had. And it's just softening off those colours. I'm painting over it with no real rhyme or reason. I am getting some of the wet paint onto it, so it is blending the colours somewhat too, which I actually really liked how that turned out. Um, but when I started doing this, I thought, oh yeah, I'm not covering up the colours. I can still see the bright colours under this. It's going to be okay. And... Throughout this whole process was um, a huge inner dialogue with myself, sort of debating whether, you know, can you keep the white space? What are you doing? Is that working? And I got to this point, it's like, oh yeah, I can see how she does it. It is actually working. So one of the next bits of her process is to actually put some stamping in. And that brings the blackness back onto the page as well, which is sort of dulled down with the layers of paint over the top. Um, so I'm using some text stamps and some mark making stamps and you can see that um, the long sort of thin stamp, I don't actually know what it is but I actually really like it. Um, I've sort of put that across the page and that's a sort of grounding horizon line I suppose for this piece. I'm also being brave and actually stamping into the white area which I really like because it sort of tumbles out. And a lot of those stamped images are actually ghost prints or ghost stampings, which means I've stamped the original stamp once with the pure ink, and then I've stamped it again, and you sort of get these duller um, grey 
prints afterwards. Um, I made sure that I heated up my ink when I was finished or my stamping when I was finished because while it is permanent ink that I'm using, um, it is oil based and it does take just a minute or two to dry so you just need to make sure it's dry otherwise it will smudge somewhat. Now I'm just going in with some straight colours over the top just to add in some extra brightness to the page. So you can see where the pink and the blue have dulled down because I've painted over white over the top. Now I'm just going in with some pure colours to bring some extra colour onto the page. And I decided because it's me and I haven't put any fuchsia on this page and it's one of my favourite colours, I wanted to go back in and add some extra colour and I'm really glad I did because this framed the whole page up. You can see I've watered it down so it's quite translucent but it just gives you a pop of colour that just frames the whole page. Particularly on the top of the eyes, it sort of really made them as a bit of a focus. Now I'm going back in again with a bit of a dry brush and just dry brushing over the top to blend it in. And this was sort of the moment, it's like, yeah, this is, this is how to do it. Um, it's okay if you cover over some of the bits you've got because you can still see it peeking through. And it's just creating those layers that peek through. So when I finish that, I'm cutting out some words, I think. No, I'm doing my paint pen over the top, sorry. So I'm just using the white paint pen to dot over the top. And again, this is something that Lisa does in all her artwork. She uses a correction um, white hat pen. But it just um, brings that pure white back into the page and over the colour. So it brings that white space into your colour and makes it really a focal point. To outline the eyes, I'm putting in my Stabilo or pencil just to make them really um, prominent on the page. And I'm just putting in some of my own mic making as well, some of my favourite crosses that I do, a bit of scribbly lines um, to follow the lines of that stamp that I had. I also added some eyelashes to the um, person as well. And I'm putting in some journaling about um, not looking forward I'm not looking backwards, sorry, I need march forward. And that sort of tied in with this quote that I had from the Art by Mylene sticker book, um, which I really liked. And I was going to put it on, but it just looked really blocky. So I wanted to cut it up and to sort of weave it through the artwork that I had. So um, the quote says, only look back to see what you have achieved, which I really like, particularly in light of this page, because I was really proud of how it all came together and how bright and vibrant it was, even though I sort of really worked against myself to use this white space. So please check out Lisa um, Oxley and her fabulous artwork, and you can see her stuff on Lifebook for next year. She's one of the guest tutors, so I'd suggest that you go and check that out as well. And thank you so much for the inspiration. Until next time, bye for now.